After a glittering gala on Saturday, the reign of Andres Nelson's at the Boston Symphony Orchestra is now underway. The young conductor presided over a concert built around his identity. WGBH News Arts Editor Jared Bowen spoke with Nelson's about that and his plans for the world-class orchestra. This was how Andres Nelson's introduced himself in his inaugural concert as the Boston Symphony Orchestra's new music director. It was Wagner's overture to Tannhauser, the piece he first heard as a five-year-old in his native Latvia that would inspire his musical life. It was a gala concert with performances by Nelson's friend, tenor Jonas Kaufman, an undeniable rock star in the opera world. Also appearing was renowned soprano Christina Opalais, who also happens to be Mrs. Nelson's. And this is how the conductor ended the evening, with Respighi's rousing and showy Pines of Rome, flooding the hall with its bombastic energy and a signal that a much different era has begun. The final notes played, the hoopla subsided. Now Nelson's must get to work, he told me yesterday, from his room near the Symphony Hall stage. Now it's, in a way, I can breathe, but I, 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 I enjoy and we, we, start, we start working. You know? Spend time watching Nelson's from his giant smile in concert to his impassioned responses in rehearsal, and you quickly understand this is a man rooted in emotion. As a listener, even as a musician in the conducting, you simply just can't, you, you want to cry, and you, you simply have the tears when you see, uh, you know, the, this beautiful music, when you hear this beautiful music. It's how he creates, how he responds, and how he works, as he settles in with the orchestra, which has been absent a director for the last three and a half years. It's a now period when we get closer and closer emotionally and humanly, and as soon as, as you got close, close, you can perform anything and you can improvise or you can, because you trust each other. So you are a constant pulse. One, two, three. For me, it's, it's, in, it's not enough to play just the notes. We, we have much bigger responsibility, it is really to create to create um, you know, the, the story, to create a drama, to create a, something special in the concert. World-renowned and only 35, Nelson's may have an even larger responsibility. Observers say he could be the great hope of luring younger audiences to classical music. Do you feel that that's, that, that is part of your responsibility, in part because of your age? Well, I... I normally don't think very much about age, but of course I'm, I, I am aware that I'm a young conductor and um, of course I want to get more and more, more experience, and, 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 uh, but I don't want to lose the, if I may, if I may say, the child, childness uh, in, the, in a good way, you know, this curiosity. Nelson's, as his opening night demonstrated, adores the classics leaving critics wondering what space he'll carve out for contemporary works. It sounds like your heart is more with tradition. Well, no, I mean, my heart is with, with, uh, my heart is with, um, with combining these things and not dividing, oh, that is, that is old-fashioned music, that is a contemporary music. For me, I would say, if it's important that any composer in any century wants to express the, the, there is a reason why he has composed the piece, and the reason comes from the heart. Much, it seems, as Nelson's himself.
So Emily, there is so much lead up to this, of course, with his announcement a couple of years ago and, and his finally taking the podium that I felt like a little bit of the excitement was deflated until I re arrived mm -hmm. on Saturday night and I met people who had come from Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia who were driven up for it. Uh, the couple next to me had cut their vacation short in Martha's Vineyard. People have been flo flocking to see him. There was such excitement that night and his program just changed Symphony Hall and the, just the energy. I, you could actually feel it. It was something mm -hmm. I really haven't experienced that often in all of my coverage that that there is a new vitality now at the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Well, I mean, what an incredible breath of fresh air just listening to him. I think you and I both went to the announcement of James Levine. I can't even remember what year that was, six or seven years ago now. And there was such fanfare and such excitement because he had such a big name. But it was a borderline disaster for many, many reasons, because mostly because of his health. But he, he, he couldn't infuse because he had to sit. He, he couldn't stand. He just couldn't infuse the audience with that kind of enthusiasm. Well, I think what happened with Levine is that there was so much promise, and he he he's a genius who who is nearing the end of his co career, and now we have somebody who is at the beginning of his career, and he is going to take us along with him as an audience, and we are going to grow with him. Mm. I think that's part of the reason there there's so much speculation about what he's going to do, and and Saturday night's concert was really about mm. him and the music that he appreciated, and he brought in these two magnificent wow. stars. Yeah. I mean, to have them here in Boston is yeah. incredible. Uh, and then, th so that's why there, there will be curiosity about what he mm -hmm. plans to do. There are some contemporary works later in, on yes, the season. Yes, that's always a controversy. <laughs> the new <laughs> music. <laughs> but, but, but he's somebody who, who has this energy. Emily, I have to tell you that I hope he never loses it. Yeah. I, I'm sure he will at some point because he, he will be the James Levine someday. Only... I would like to hear him do the new music because, frankly, I hated it under everybody else, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, he, and he'll, he'll, he'll get us there. Yeah, but, he probably but, will. But uh, there, there's much to appreciate with him. What are some of the other, is he having, because in previous years they've done theme nights like all Beethoven or all Schubert, are they doing any of that or is he breaking away from that as well? He's doing a lot, there is a lot of tr tradition in this first season and I, I think that's why he's trying to find his space with the orchestra, which he, he already, you can see just in, when I sat through some of the rehearsal yesterday, you can see that he responds very well. There's actually a lot of humor even while mm -hmm. I was there. That They clearly are soaking up that every everything that he has to say, all the critics have raved about, uh, have largely praised this yeah. concert from Saturday night, which, by the way, you can hear on our sister oh, station, right. WCRB. Just go to the web, web website and you can listen to that concert from the other night and get ticket information and, and listening information. Uh, but Is he going to live here? Because that made a difference, too. I asked him. He's been so busy, he hasn't found a place yet, but he absolutely he's already gonna, knows in the city where he wants to be. Critical. All right, Jerry Bowen, thank you.